Are you tired of feeling held back by your partners in Solo Shuffle and want to play a spec that can actually win games on its own? Then don't worry, because if you want your rating to be higher than Peekaboo on a Friday night, then stay tuned, because in this video you will learn the 9 most powerful solo carry specs for every role in Season 3. Before we start, be sure to check out SkillCap.com. Everything at SkillCap is backed by a rating game guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. But first, we have to answer a question. What really carries in Solo Shuffle? If you think the answer is utility, think again. While it's definitely helpful to have safety nets for your team, utility isn't the best way to accomplish the main goal of Solo Shuffle, which is to actually score a kill as quickly as possible. This means we have to rule out specs like Arms Warrior. Even though warriors can block damage from happening, they aren't really efficient at setting up kills in the first place. We will also have to rule out specs like Demo Warlock for similar reasons. Even though Demo might do incredible sustained damage, it lacks the true finishing power to win games alone, which is our true goal if we want to solo carry. So in order to solo carry as a DPS, we're aiming to find specs that can set up kills on their own while ideally being tanky enough to survive in deep dampening. Out of 26 possible DPS specs, we've narrowed our choices down considerably. So let's start with melee DPS, where there are two clear standouts. It shouldn't surprise you that Demon Hunter is our first pick, and is arguably the best solo carry class in the game with its current tuning. Demon Hunter gives you everything you need to win games by yourself. Not only does DH have some of the highest sustained damage in the game, but is one of the most lethal classes when it comes to single target burst. Of course, there are other specs too which have even better burst damage, like Frost Death Knight, who have one of the most lethal AoE setups in the bracket. But the true advantage of Demon Hunter is how consistently it can lock down targets. With multiple stun options and with instant cast range CC for healers, you don't have to rely on your partner setting up kills for you, which is the perfect one-two punch when paired with that big juicy burst. Defensively, Demon Hunter scores well, even having the lowest overall death rate of any DPS. Great passive spell damage reduction combined with a diverse set of defensive cooldowns give Demon Hunters the fighting chance to survive into the late game, where their damage really starts to snowball. The only other melee who can come close to solo carrying like a Demon Hunter is Windwalker Monk. If we check the data, you can see Monks actually score second highest on burst damage. The amount of kill power generated by Serenity is unmatched, and without good defensive cooldown trading, it is an almost guaranteed win condition. In a world without weak auras blasting air horns, Windwalker Monks would be an apex predator. The only true offensive weakness is their long CC setup, relying on leg sweep and in order to lock down kill targets while incapping the enemy healer. If you watched the first cup in this season's AWC, you might have been shocked to see a Windwalker play with a sub rogue and actually win the entire tournament, but that's because the rogue actually enabled the monk to deal unhealable damage inside of stun. So even though Windwalker monks can technically set up kills on their own, you might feel a bit limited by the longer cooldowns of leg sweep and incap. Fortunately, the monk defensive kit is diverse enough to draw out games into deeper dampening to get multiple uses out of serenity and leg sweep, and even then, monk damage is currently so good that it can score random kills even outside of cooldowns. We have one more mentioned for melee, but this one is a wild card. Both Outlaw and Sub Rogue have the potential to carry, but are significantly weaker at lower MMR. This is because Rogues do not carry with damage, but instead carry with control. In fact, all three Rogue specs actually rank the lowest when it comes to damage inside burst windows, but that's because their burst is secondary to control. The damage only feels scary because everyone is locked down. If we think of a classic comp like RMP, of course the Rogue's burst damage does have an impact, but the real contribution Rogues offer is control, enabling their team to burst with them uninterrupted. Ever wonder why every AWC is stacked with rogues, it's because they are like a true support class. Unfortunately, this doesn't always transfer to solo shuffle, though it certainly can. In order to solo carry as a rogue, you really need a good feel of arena and understand how to create win conditions on the back of control, which is an abstract concept for many players, who would rather just press W on their keyboard. Combine that with the fact that you might have lobbies with other DPS who have no idea how to play with a rogue, and you got a recipe for disaster. Is it possible to solo carry as a rogue? Yes, even at lower ratings, but it's going to require a bit more work compared to something like a Demon Hunter and naming yourself Demon King X. But now, let's move on to ranged DPS. Here, we're going to encounter a small problem. If you play a caster, there's a very high chance that you will be the kill target every game. Seriously, if you step into the arena wearing cloth armor, you set off an alarm to every marks hunter in a 5 mile radius. So, if you want to carry, you're going to need big burst damage, which is hopefully instant, and the ability to create small setups on your own. An obvious candidate here is Devastation Evoker, and we don't even need to look at the data because you already know that they have the best burst damage in the entire game. But what's truly unique about Devastation is the fact that they actually have Lockdown, which is rare as a ranged DPS and can stun the entire enemy team with deep breath in order to make their burst more lethal and, more importantly, almost guaranteed. 
Evokers are also fortunate enough to have their main CC ability tied into a spell school separate from their damage, and even though most kills aren't set up around Sleepwalk, it's still a good quality of life improvement and allows them to manage interrupts more reliably compared to other casters. And although we've said in the past that Devastation Evoker is squishy, we're starting to rethink that position. After buffs to health pools in Season 3, Evokers actually feel a bit tankier, at least compared to similar ranged DPS like Elemental Shaman. So if you're wanting an explosive experience in every solo shuffle, pick up Devastation Evoker. Once you master its burst sequence, you will have a very high chance of carrying most lobbies. The only other range that we think has the potential to truly solo carry is Destro Warlock, which checks multiple boxes for a true solo carry spec. But before we continue, you have to understand that Destro Warlock has the highest overall death rate across all ratings, which simply means you have a high chance to get tunneled every round. Luckily, Warlock defensives are good enough to actually deal with getting trained, having some of the most efficient CDs in the game for tanking and escaping damage. And if you're willing to play under pressure, Destro Warlock will have a massive payoff as the spec is just designed to win games, even without needing to press a single Chaos Bolt. The true power of Destro Warlock comes from instant cast damage, and especially Dimensional Rift, which is even stronger now thanks to the tier set of Season 3. The amount of early game momentum generated by spamming rifts is absolutely ridiculous considering that it's an instant cast spell that cannot be line of sighted. It's basically wall hacking but for WoW. Destro is also one of the few casters with multi-target lockdown, having the ability to actually create windows inside of double coil which frees up valuable space to free cast those chaos bolts. So with great burst damage, a strong defensive kit, and the ability to set up kills by itself, Destro is easily one of the best solo carry specs. For our third range spec, we had a few different options, with BM Hunter and Balanced Druid both being appealing choices. Sorry to our chicken friends, but we're going to give the lead to BM Hunter for now. While Balanced Druid definitely has a lot of carry potential, it's often prone to getting bullied in melee heavy lobbies, where it is forced to spend time in bear form, relying mostly on a 1 minute CC setup of Root Beam that most players are quick to counter these days. So because they can easily lack agency, we're keeping Balanced Druid as an honorable mention. That's why we're giving the slight lead to Beast Mastery Hunter. Although it lacks the same burst potential as some of the other specs we've mentioned, it's still able to have enormous impact over games simply by having a reliable CC chain for enemy healers. With Diamond Ice becoming more standard, BM Hunters have to worry less about CC breaks when playing with those high tier melee who love to cleave the whole team down, like their Stone Cold Steve Austin in a supermarket. BM Hunter also have surprisingly low death rates across all ratings, even within the same ballpark as Arms Warriors. And unlike many other ranged DPS, Beast Mastery barely suffers any damage loss when it's attacked, allowing its high sustained DPS to carry deep into dampening. So although it might seem like a spec that can't actually solo carry, BM has a convenience factor that virtually every caster lacks, and it's no surprise that the spec continues to have some of the highest win rates in Season 3. As we move on to healers, you might be thinking there's no way a healer can carry. No matter where you look, healers will remind you how miserable it might feel to heal in solo shuffle. Even if you are the best healer in the game, your fate is sometimes in the hands of questionable DPS. So when thinking about how to solo carry as a healer, we need a spec with a solid healing toolkit to keep their team alive, while also having either high damage or amazing control to help fight against DPS throwing the game. Resto Druid obviously checks both of these boxes, fundamentally being able to carry the game on the back of incredible single target healing. This is sometimes misunderstood by inexperienced Druid rerolls. In order to make your control count, you need to do the healing work first because it enables you to play more aggressive. Obviously, the aggressive aspect of Resto Druid comes primarily from Cyclone, which is more than just a tool to harass enemy healers, but is great at slowing down the game by CCing enemy DPS, which then allows the Druid's team to be more aggressive. All this is backed up by the fact that Druids have one of the strongest healing cooldowns for solo shuffle, with tree form being an amazing tool to keep up momentum in the early game, and more importantly to hold on to momentum much later in the game when it can be used once more. So because Resto Druids have the healing output capable to maintain momentum, any additional contributions with control are just going to be extra credit. In a similar boat is Resto Shaman. Now of course shamans don't have the same healing strengths as Druid, but more than make up for it with the sheer amount of control and utility they can offer their team. The entire shaman class is built around disruption, bending the elements to disable their foes, putting your highly disruptive kit in the hand of a healer is the perfect recipe to create a spec that can directly contribute to kills. The Shaman Healing Toolkit is fairly limited, mostly centered around proactive play with Earthen Wall Totem, then simple forms of maintenance like keeping up Earth Shield using Riptide and Healing Stream on cooldown. This frees up a lot of globals for offensive play, where shamans can contribute with a plethora of options, ranging from a simple ranged interrupt, a 2 buff purge, hard CC, and even actual lockdown with lightning lasso. Perhaps the most overlooked carry potential of the spec is just how much it can disrupt enemy melee DPS. 
ABS. The combination of static field totem with totemic projection on top of roots and knocks can directly enable shamans to make key plays both offensively and defensively, keeping enemy players trapped in a UFC cage ready to be KO'd by an inbound demon hunter. And if all of this wasn't enough, Resto Shaman has some of the best burst damage of any healer. While it might be difficult to fit in globals for damage, the fact that Lava Burst is on an entirely different spell school means shamans are less punished for offensive play. Our last healer is very similar to Shaman but requires the disclaimer that it can be frustrating to play and is currently weaker in the meta. Preservation Evokers are at least on paper the most offensive healer. With the highest potential damage out of any healer, long casted CC, two knocks, and more, Evokers are highly disruptive and generally play best when they can push in with their team. Unfortunately, this comes with the acute weakness that Evokers are highly exposed most of the game, leaving them reliant on a few small cooldowns to make up for their weaker healing output. If game balance is to ever swing in their favor, we would easily see Preservation becoming a highly oppressive spec in Solo Shuffle since their offensive potential is so high. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.